You were on the first Terror Squad album, though. I was on, yeah, I was on the first Terror Squad album. Indeed, okay. I was on the record My Kind of Girls. Okay. Which was, so you that, know. <laughs> so, so that was like the first time you're really on record, is the Terror Squad album? Uh, the first time I was on a professional record, no. I think uh, I went with Pun to go meet up with Tretch. And uh, I did the Naughty by Nature album, Nature's Fury. We can do it with Pun. And Pun was so funny because okay. we went in there and Pun was like, Pun heard the beat and Pun was like, yo, you remember that take off? When I was a kid, 13, 14 years old, I think the first record I actually sung for Pun and we was rapping back and forth to was this record I had called Take Off Your Clothes. And so I'm talking about like 10, 10, 10 maybe 10 years later, we walk into the session and Pun hears the beat and he tells me, you remember that 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 song you used to sing, Take Off Your Clothes? And I told him, yeah. I said, yeah. He said, yeah. So I think he told Tretch, yo, I'm, I'm going to jump on the record, but my man got to jump on it too. Yeah. Tretch was like, yeah. So that was my first joint I jumped on the record with Tretch and Pun called We Can Do It. Okay. Um, so, so then Yeah Baby comes out. Yeah Baby. All right. And that's when you record 100%. I recorded, yeah, I'm on, I'm, I'm on like uh, a few songs. Let's just say sixty percent of the album. You know, Pun's whole idea of that Yeah Baby album was like, 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 like introducing me and just as an artist, not just as an R&B singer, but being funny and witty and doing different things with him. Um, I was actually on the It's So Hard record before they put Darnell Jones on it. You know, oh, I didn't, I didn't and, know. That. Uh, yeah, they said it was politics, and I was on too many records and. You know, um, whatever. You know, I was just happy that Darnell Jones was singing some I was a part of, and 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 I was open for it. And you know, I don't think Pun would have been happy about it, but it is what it is. You know, right? Because Pun ended up dying before the album right, was released. Right. Right. Wow. During the process of the album getting mixed and mastered, you know, the tragedy happened. So. You're around Pun, right? And before before he had the heart attack, he went to uh, like a, a rehab kind of center, like so. Yeah, of some me sort. and Macho, me and Macho, uh, me and Macho, Liza, his wife, and his kids. We went down. Matter of fact, me, Liza, Macho, and Pun. Yeah, we went down to North Carolina. Uh. I don't want to call it a fat farm, but that's what they called it. That's where the football players go to get in shape and things of that nature. So we went there. We spent like a month and a half there with them. And we did the pool every day and helped them exercise and things like that. And that's where we recorded uh, the Yeah Baby album. We recorded the whole album there. So he lost 150 pounds. He was doing pretty well. You know, but he wanted to go home. He got homesick and he wanted to go. and. You know, um, I'm not going to say that I didn't contribute to the food thing because that was my king. That was my guy. You know, that was my big brother. And if that's what he wanted, he couldn't do other things that other people wanted him to do, like 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 jump in the drop top Ferrari and, you know, and jump on a motorcycle and just pop up in the club and take his shirt off and dance on stage and, you know... So every now and then he asked for something to eat. That's what made him happy. But I would argue with him about that too, and he would throw me out. Every now and then I would, you know, like, fuck it. But Pun was the type of individual that it, 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 it was what it was. He, he wants this, and this is what you're going to give him, and if not, get the fuck out. And he would argue with me to that point, to like, yo, I will fuck you up. I will fuck you up, Tom, get the fuck out. And I would have to eat that, you know, but... A lot of motherfuckers around him contributed to the nonsense, you know, and straight tragedy. Right, because after he left the, I mean, the fat farm, the way he described it, he, he started to gain all the way back. Um, after he left the fat farm, it took him several, several days, maybe a week before he actually was like on some fuck it shit. You know, um, Pun was a funny dude, man. Like we asked him to do so many different things, so many different theories, and 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 
and he he's a funny dude, like liposuction and things like that. He was like, I'm a gangster. <laughs> you know, we don't do that. I don't want no scars. He would say funny jokes like, I don't want no scars on my body. But you know, he got stab wounds and he got stab wounds. You don't want no war. You don't, you don't want no scars on your body, but you got more war wounds than everybody we know. You know, so, but Pun was like that. He was stubborn in his ways and it was what he said and what he wanted and you know, he was the breadwinner and he was taking care of everybody and how can you tell him no? Right, and by the time that, that he died, he was like 700 pounds. And 700 pounds, yeah. <sighs> yeah, I mean, that, that's that's sad. I mean, that, that's sad. Most that, definitely. Most you know, definitely. he had people around him that, that weren't like really like, no, fuck that. Like, you go, no, you he go had them. dying if, if you keep that, going. I'm not, I'm not saying he didn't. I'm not saying he didn't. I witnessed. I witnessed Joe have several conversations with him. I'm more. I'm more than sure that Liza had several conversations with him. Like I said, he threw me out his his house and and and, and you know told me several times in different places he'll smack the shit out of me and you know that's the way he was. So God bless her dad. Like where were you when you heard the news of the heart attack? Uh, nobody wanted to tell me. You know, I'm the type of individual, even till this day, I'll listen to a CD, I'll listen to a tape, I'll even go to a record player and put a record on if I could, but I, I, I don't really listen to radio and I don't know why. So I didn't really know that w what had happened yet because I hadn't seen Pun for a few days. You know, he had invited me up. Yo, come up. But I, I told him that I had we had just got home from tour. So I was spending time with my family for the week and things like that. And um, so the next day, my little brother, not my real little brother, but he's my little brother. He comes, picks me up, and he has the radio off, and he's not answering his phone. And everybody's looking at me like I'm bugged out. Like, I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm looking at them like, what's going on? And I go turn the radio on, and they tell me, hold on, wait, wait, wait. They're trying to tell me. So while I'm trying to turn the radio on, and they're telling me not to, back then we still had beepers and, 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 and Motorola phones. So I got a 911 beep. So I call that number, and they're asking me, you know, they're asking me if, uh, if I spoke to Lizzie and how she doing and to give my condolences. And I'm like, so, you know, I look at my little brother like, yo, what's going on? He turns the radio on and I hear Angie Martinez and crying and talking about it. And that was it. I just broke down. You know, it was, it was, it was, it was def definitely a devastating blow. What was the, I mean, was it just his weight or was it a, was it a combination of some other things? I mean, I can't tell you, you know, uh, a lot of people have asked me if it, it, is, it was a chemical induced situation, drugs. I don't know pun for doing drugs. You know, I know pun for maybe drinking some liquor, taking a pool off a cigarette because he's drunk to be funny and barely and barely. But personally, me personally, I don't know pun for doing drugs. I don't know him. So I've heard this many a times, but that's not the case as far as I'm concerned. And the crazy thing about it is pun ate, right? Pun like food, because pun ate. But I don't think he ate that much to be that big. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is for Liza to talk about if she if she wants to, but I know of a you know he had an accident when he was a kid and he was given certain medicines that 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 fucked with his his immune system and things like that. He gained a thyroid problem and he was gaining rapid weight, you know. Now the details of that and the intel of that situation, I wouldn't be able to tell you, and I don't think it's my place to. Yeah. But so. Pun, pun passes away. Right. And then you have Terror Squad, but then you have Joe's people and you have Pun's people. Right. Like, immediately after Pun's death, like, what started to happen in the group? I mean, I don't know if you could call it Pun's people and Joe's people. Okay. You know, because uh, Joe's people, Pun's people were Joe's people. 
You understand? If we're gonna say uh, puns, people, we'll say uh, Sace, Prospect, and the other guy. I won't say his name. Vlad, I vowed to never say his name. He's a clown. But anyway, the other guy. Okay. And um, those were his guys. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't, I don't know where the puns guys and Joe's guys. You know, okay. pun had a handful of. I mean, I, I was. And, and I was, I was, I was, I was, I was puns guy too. I'm not gonna exclude myself. I was both their guys. I never played both sides of the field, and thank God I was never, never asked to compromise myself and be put in that situation. But to be truthful, puns guys were Joe's guys. You know what I'm saying? That that was Joe's whole crew became Pun's crew. You know what I mean? So I don't know to say the crew was divided. 